Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to allow the resistance of the circuit itself go to zero. We're going to do an example. We're going to start off with a normal example where the initial resistance of the circuit is 99 ohms. Let's say that the internal resistance of the battery is 1 ohm, and let's say that the EMF provided by the battery is 24 volts. We're going to calculate both the voltage supplied by the battery and the current to the circuit. But then we're going to allow the circuit resistance to go to zero. The internal resistance is still equal to 1 ohm. The EMF is still going to be 24 volts, but then what will happen to the voltage supplied to the circuit and the current through the circuit? And also the current through the battery, because of course the current through the circuit equals the current through the battery, and you'll see what happens to the battery when the external resistance goes to zero. It's not a good situation. All right, let's start with our first example where resistance is 99 ohms and the internal resistance is 1 ohm. So the voltage supplied to the circuit is going to be the EMF, which is 24 volts, multiplied by the ratio of 99 ohms, divided by 99 ohms plus 1 ohm, which of course is 100 ohms. And so the voltage supplied by the battery is would be 24 times 0.99 is 23 volts, 0.76. So 23.76 volts. That's the voltage supplied to the circuit in the case that we have an external resistance of 99 ohms and 1 ohm of internal resistance. In other words, the voltage supplied to the circuit is almost equal to the EMF, just a slightly bit less. So the internal resistance doesn't really matter much. The current to the circuit, I, is going to be the EMF, 24 volts, divided by the total resistance, 99 ohms plus 1 ohm, which means that I is going to be equal to 0.24 volts. And just to show you the difference, let's calculate the power dissipated by the battery. So the power by the battery is equal to I squared R. So in this case, that would be 0.24 volts, oh, not volts, I'm sorry, amps squared, that's the current squared, times the resistance of 1 ohm. So 0.24 squared at times 1, well, don't have to do that. So the power dissipated would be 0.0576 watts. That's a very small power dissipation. You'll notice that when a battery is operated under normal circumstances, it will become somewhat warm because the internal resistance will dissipate some of the energy, not a lot. But now what happens when the external resistance goes to zero? Well, first of all, the potential or the voltage supplied to the circuit is equal to the EMF times the ratio of the outside of the circuit resistance divided by the circuit resistance plus the internal resistance. And you can see that V supplied is equal to zero. No voltage supplied to the circuit There's no, because there's no resistance there. However, the current to the circuit will still be there. I is going to be equal to the EMF divided by the circuit resistance plus the internal resistance, which in this case is 24 volts, divided by 0 plus 1 ohm, which is going to be 24 amps. Of course, that's assuming that the battery actually can push 24 amps to the circuit, but let's assume that this is correct. Then what would be the power dissipation of the battery? Well, the power of the battery is going to be I squared times R, which is equal to 24 amps squared times 1 ohm, which is going to be equal to 576, I believe that's correct, 25, 25 yes, I believe so, and uh, that's watts, and the power dissipation of the battery. Let me check that real quick, 24 squared, yes, that's correct. So you can see that that would be a serious problem. If you're trying to drive that much current through the battery because there's no external resistance, the small internal resistance will cause a large power dissipation because of the very large current going through the circuit. 576 watts, that battery probably will explode. So be very careful. Essentially what that means is if there's no external resistance, 
you simply short out the battery. You allow free flow of current through the battery at a very high current level and there's then going to be a very high power dissipation. You don't want to be in this kind of situation. Hopefully this example helps you better understand the difference between voltage and EMF and it does really depend a lot about the relative size of the internal resistance and the external resistance of the circuit. If the external resistance is large, you can almost ignore the internal resistance. If the external resistance is very small or non-existent, then it becomes a real big problem and you do need to note it. That's EMF.